My name is René Rebe, uh, coming to you from Germany. And I'm a 25-year Linux developer, started around 1998-ish uh, um, with Rock Linux of all Linux distributions. Um, and basically did touch most major open source projects since then, so Linux kernel, glibc GCC, and still run the successor of this Linux distribution today, T2 system development environment, T2 SDE. Mm -hmm. Linux that is not yet another Linux distribution, but actually a very flexible build kit, or some call it meta distribution. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably as an introduction, what is so special? Because so many people, of course, like, why yet another Linux distribution? Like, hey, <laughs> we're doing this for 25 years. But also, we support all CPU architectures from ARM to x86 over RISC-V, PowerPC, Spark, MIPS, uh, <laughs> some collection. And um, yeah, that's basically, I guess, intro introduction. And uh, thanks for having me. And let's, let's see what we talk about today. Well, when people say this is just another distro, I think people forget how few distros really were around back in... So that would have been 1999, 2000? Yes? Before that, yeah, I mm -hmm. um, I think Rock Linux was started by Claire here in uh, Austria. Mm -hmm. um, I think 1990 is like summer of 1996 or so, and I got there relatively early, like within. So I, I'm for sure contributed to Rock Linux uh, 1998, mm -hmm. and at that time it was already in magazines and and stuff and international. We had international developers and stuff mm -hmm. from America, even Singapore and so on. So 1998 was already. It was going, so mm -hmm. it was be before the year 2000, for sure. So before we can get into your stuff, can you give just like a brief explanation of what Rock Linux was? Because I'm sure most people probably haven't heard of that one. Yeah, um, sure. I mean, also, also Rock, Rock Linux was a little bit more popular back in the day. Um, so in the 2000s, there uh, were like, instead of like, the, I always joke, we have 2000 or probably more Linux distributions. So back in the early days, there were like maybe only two dozens or so. Mm -hmm. um, many of the early ones you have never heard about uh, what DLS or uh, I mean, of course, Slackware and, and so on. I think Red Hat was even based on some other, probably uh, whatever that was. And so Rock Linux was um, one of the few li unique Linux distributions. And it was like one of the early source distributions, mm -hmm. um, like similar to Gentoo. Um, I think Gentoo was probably invented some month after also 1996, some, somewhere there. So it's because people was like, yeah, why don't you just Gen 2? I mean, first of all, it's entirely different. <laughs> and it's like, it's as old, right? So, right, right. and so this are, this were the early Linux distributions. Um, and many of the others, like just last year, the, the things with Red Hat and people forking it even more, even the Oracle and SUSE and alliances and, mm -hmm. and, and so on. Um, most Linux distributions are actually simply forks, right? Like just a copy of another yes. one and Rock Linux or Slackware and Debian and others are actually those original inventions of Even in the case of Slackware and Debian, they technically were a fork of, um, I'm blanking on the name now, but. Or uh, SL, SLS or yes, actually. Yes, SLS. Yeah, yeah I, even I, I mean, it's, it's. I mean, I was super young. I mean, I was at school, right? Like, so like running Linux distribution from school. <laughs> um, people always don't believe me because like, hey, I started when I was in school. <laughs> so I was like, you're, you're not doing this for 25 years. Like, yeah, sure. Um, and yeah, I, even those details, I mean, 2000 distributions, I even I start to like, this starts to decay. <laughs> even I would need to open Wikipedia for the details. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's one of those true uh, original distributions. And the, the reason I found this, so I, I actually started, so I grew up with DOS. So we, as a funny thing is, we had totally no Unix. I, I don't know, how, probably how, how it is for most normal people. Like my neighbors and like in like my parents or neighbors, like nobody had Unix, right? right. Like I didn't even know that existed. I mean, my, I mean, like I grew up with a 286 and then quickly 386 of my father's. And so I, I did everything on, like I started majorly on the 386 SX25 with two megabyte of memory. Um, and initially not even a hard drive, starting off as floppies. And I've not even seen the greatest graphics because 386 didn't do much graphics. Right. And only neighbors had like an Amiga 500, right? And I only knew like the highest end graphics I knew were the Amiga 500 graphics of our neighbor. 
And so I didn't even know that Unix existed. So when I, I only found this Linux through magazines mm -hmm. and like I tried some because back in the day, the magazines sometimes came with some Linux CD on, on the cover, right? And like I tried Debian and like in 1996 or 1995, 1996, it wasn't that amazing. And it's like coming from DOS and Windows, it's like, it's like now it's interesting, but like do is that hard and uh, cursed? And then I even purchased the SUSE back in the day, the big German Linux distribution. Mm -hmm. And this was like better, but still, yeah. And this is how I found Rocket Linux. Right? I, I thought like, it's an interesting concept, but it could be so much more. Mm -hmm. And so that is how, in, also from a magazine, I found uh, Rocket Linux um, back in the day and started contributing there. Like it was basically because it was a source, you could build it because you, you couldn't just build SUSE or you couldn't just build Debian. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to change some things. And this is how, I came to the source distribution that is Rock Linux mm -hmm. and started there and basically did the desktop stuff there. So I basically did the desktop Rock Linux mm -hmm. um, since then until it continued to in 2003, I believe this continued into this more professional targeted T2, which is the only successor of, of the Rock Linux line mm -hmm. of source distribution. So what was it that initially drew you to Linux? Was it just this cool thing that you saw in this magazine is like, oh, I like DOS, I like messing around with computers. Or was there something specific about it that, that really grabbed your attention? Yeah. Um, so the thing is, so my friend and I, so it's, it's, I mean, it's crazy that, I mean, today everything looks so easy, right? You just Google some stuff and Wikipedia and, and, and OS dev org and, and, and stuff. Yep, and, yep, yep. So like back in the day, we had to teach all our stuff as books from the library. And like, there were only like two computer geeks in this town uh, back in the day, like my neighbor and I, right? Like, like we did, we basically started game developing and the demo scene stuff. And like we did, we did like when we were like 13 or so, like we did high performance assembly on 386 and, and tried to get the most out of VGA graphic. And we wanted to start an owner bring system because like we, we were developing on DOS and DOS obviously sucked except for gaming and Windows sucked even more, right? Like basically like in 1990s, like everything, every, every advanced thing in Windows like crashed, like you did something advanced it crashed. And like that is why I am not touching Windows anymore. Yes, it's 25 years since then, but Nonetheless, so this is why like Windows was for us a crashing experience. And we wanted to do, actually we wanted to do 3D, 3D graphics in Windows 95 and surprise, like every API call you did like crashed. Yes, this, this were the early days of 3D graphics, but like, and my friend and I like, dude, how can this suck so much? Like, why does it crash like all the time? You can't even, like, how should we do a 3D gram with this crashing stuff? And so we were longing for a more stable operating system. And we were on the verge to write our own. Like basically, we were sitting there with an Intel. Like we called Intel Munich in Germany. It's like, like fourteen <laughs> year old or so. It's like um, we would like some hardware reference specification of your processors. And like this time when Intel sent you like some thick book and it's like protected mode. And it's like okay, how do we program this stuff? And then we discovered like we we were like sitting in the basement starting our operating system. And then because we wanted something more stable than Windows. And we didn't even know, we, we never probably heard of Unix, right? Like with all the books we read and there was, I mean, I, I think we have not even seen a Macintosh. So rare, this expensive stuff was at least in Germany, right? Not, not growing up in Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't, I did not even knew probably that Apple existed from books and the library and, and stuff. So we were thrilled to find like, hey, someone else has done this protected mode system that's not constantly crashing. Mm -hmm. And like, hey, let's, Let's use this as a base and see what we can do with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> you're like, Windows sucks. It's made by this multi-billion dollar company. We're just going to do it better. Yeah, or to be fair, like back in the day, Microsoft wasn't that big, right? Oh, I mean, sure, back in the sure. day, multi-million like, dollar company, like, we'll say. 